Hey there, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop, and tonight our guest is the one and only Dave Walsh. Wave hello, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Insane. Hello, boys. Hello, everybody. There we go. We're going to talk about his true tell method and how you're going to book better with your auditions because he's the best coach in the business. And we got some other cool stuff, right, George? Oh, yeah. You stick around long enough, I'll make your eyes roll back into your head. All right. Heck. All that and more coming up on Voice Over Body Shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive. From their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are the guys. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. I heard another voice in there. <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the extra voice, um, our good friend. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff yes. sent that one in. Thank yes. you. Yes. Anyway, um well, you know, it's we're on lockdown here in LA. So uh yep. I'm I if if we could turn the camera around, you'd see that I'm all alone here. It's more fun when Sue is here because she laughs. But uh <laughs> <laughs> Especially, especially when something is actually funny. But uh, tonight we have a great guest. Uh, Dave Walsh will be with us in a second. But uh, are, are you going to stay locked down in your apartment, George, for the next two weeks? You're not going anywhere, right? Not likely. Uh, well, I mean, what's going anywhere? What counts? Can you go outside and ride a bicycle? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. Can you go to Trader Joe's? Not advisable, but yeah. Okay, well, I'll be doing those two things. So sue me. Okay. <laughs> you'll, you'll be I hearing from my okay. attorney. Yes, I hope that's okay. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, no dining out. No, you can get takeout, but um, you know, order takeout from some restaurant if you can. Keep them in business. They are. It's going to be a rough couple of weeks on all the restaurants and all the local businesses. And yeah. that small business Saturday, well, that was an, that was a pretty big one because <laughs> they can't really operate until I think what is it, December twentieth, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, Sorry, guys. What are, what are we going to do? And I shaved off my beard because it was our 26th wedding anniversary, and it made me look 10 years younger for the Yay. third for the third time during this this lockdown. Anyway, so let me introduce our guest because he's one of our favorite guys around here in Los Angeles because he's probably one of the best voiceover coaches around, and his name is Dave Walsh. Welcome once again to Voiceover Body Shop, Dave. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Hey, lockdown, as you said, you're talking about lockdown. Yeah, you're you're in Vegas at the moment, though. I am in Vegas in um, <clears throat> my mother's uh, second bedroom. <laughs> An homage to my nephews on the wall. So those are not my children. Oh, okay. Well, that, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a you know you, you got to go to mom's house every now and again. Got to go to mom's house. Right. Absolutely. Fascinating. Absolutely. I go to my mom's house. We take the dog. The dog's like, oh, where's the bedroom? I get to sleep in there. I'll sleep there. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. But it's, uh, it's, it's just kind of a kind of what's happening right now in the world is that I'm, we're commuting back and forth. My mom is in Vegas and she's, 
you know, she lives alone. So she's got friends that are here, but it's kind of getting her back and forth into different environments. And uh, we didn't have a chance to see. Uh, we had a very quiet Thanksgiving. My um, my partner's out of town and my, my stepkids were doing their thing. And so we're hoping that we can get the family together, hopefully at Christmas. But it's this is the way it is right now. We're all isolated. Yeah. But because we have this ability, this is the, this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I usually ask our guests, you know, during all of this, this nutsiness, you know, how has it affected you and your business? I mean, people still have to do voiceover and you still do voiceover yourself, too, right? Yep, I do. Um, it's we're doing um, uh, working with clients right now has really changed the dynamic of everything. It's, um, you know, I, I find that it's really not slowed down that much from the, from the coaching perspective, just to kind of go back to what you're saying a minute ago asking if I still perform. Um, I'm actually coaching full time now. Um, I decided a, a few years ago to make that decision because this really was was really calling to me a lot more. I found more of a joy in this than anything. And so it's really become an incredible part of, of my work. Um, it has been amazing to me to see how we as an industry have responded to COVID because I've said this for the last seven months, who knew we were the cockroaches of Corona? That voiceover was the one part of the entertainment business that continued to survive. There have been casualties, obviously, several agencies have closed um, and, and actors have kind of moved about in that way. It's made work a little more challenging, but it's also made the world a hell of a lot more competitive because I know you guys were really at the very beginning, I mean, the word source connect was in the middle of George's name. I mean, that was just become the thing where people who didn't know what source connect was and several clients who were very prominent voice actors really had not installed source connect in their homes. And we realized that if they didn't have source connect and have home studios, they couldn't work. Their agents were incredibly blunt with them. Either you have a studio at home or you don't work. So it really made everybody kind of, get on their toes and really change what they were doing. And it made me more aware of how to help clients get to that place where they weren't going to agents' offices if they lived in LA or New York as much. They were relying completely on themselves at home. Yep. So that, if anything, if that has done anything for my work, it's really upped my need to be able to get them there yeah. as quickly as possible. Yeah, George and I have certainly seen that. Of course, this may have finally spelled the death knell for ISDN. Nobody's using these anymore. No, there's not. a Zephyr Classic. <laughs> there's an Express. Don't you remember, Jordan, when we were going through my stuff a couple of months ago, about a month ago, you were like, you don't need that anymore. You don't need that anymore. I had yeah. my, my my purple, I, I think Sean Donnellan, great voice talent. Sean Donnellan loves to call it the purple VCR. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Prima. The Prima. The Prima was know. the purple VCR. So. I need to get one of those for my museum. I eventually want to fill this whole shelf with nothing but old. Dude, <laughs> except, I've got one in my garage. You want mine? You have it. I'll give okay, it to you. Okay, sounds good. It goes in the museum. <laughs> totally. But it's but it's that change in the business now where everything has been so streamlined that, like you said, Dan, ISDN is it's still there, but everyone is about Source Connect. I mean, it's 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 you know it's IPDTL as well, but but Source Connect has become the you know, the, the new ISDM. Yeah. yeah. There's other systems being cobbled in too. I've, I've been hearing that. I mean, some of the bigger networks are coming up with their entirely own workflows and even writing their own software I've seen on a rare occasion. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because I think, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, they, they don't want to pay the fee for Source Connect. <laughs> I, <laughs> right. No, <laughs> they don't want to. They don't. But I think, um, I think actors have become at least what I've seen with, with my with my talent is they become much more creative in how they have been responding to work. And I think particularly in animation and video games, which I don't coach, but I think Bob Bergen is a perfect example of someone who's led that charge of having been working, you know, at Warner Brothers for so long and the studios being very reluctant at first to work with talent isolated in their homes, home, own home studios. And Bob was one of these people that was so vocal going, I'm not going in, I'm working from home. And so I think everyone, you know, particularly in those areas where they've never worked from home, you guys know this, they, they've never really done that kind of thing. And the fact that that industry has adapted to this is huge, is massive. And how that's gonna change 
commercial and promo anime animation and et cetera, you know, post COVID. Yeah. We, we've all, happens. Yeah. We've only been warning people for about 15 years that they have to do that. But anyway, yeah. So everybody's out there and they're auditioning and they're auditioning. And, you know, we talk about this all the time and these auditions go into this vortex and they're gone. And we never hear anything back. And it's very difficult to judge how well somebody is doing. So it's yeah. always advised that you work with a coach uh, to do these things. Uh, I, I have found out I've worked with you and you just totally changed the way I look at copy and, and thinking about these things. You use this thing called the true tell method, uh, which, you know, when put into practice and there's a, there's a little bit to it, it's very, very effective and makes you sound real which i guess is the whole point yeah i mean it's it's you know it's been the the kind of the the light at the end of the tunnel for me when i I, i've mentioned this to you guys before but the reason it was created was because i ended up developing a vocal injury um about about 10 years ago a little over that and i went into speech but into speech therapy and found out from the 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 gentleman the doctor that i worked with who was the only doctor in the world who treated this particular disorder, which is called spasmodic dysphonia, which is a medical term for the strangled voice syndrome. He basically said to me, you have created a sound that you think is what agents and producers and casting directors want. And they did to a certain extent, but what I did was put a voice on top of the stories I was telling to think that that was bookable and bankable. And it was until my body gave out. My voice wouldn't sustain it. And so he had mentioned that we all have what's called a vocal identity and that we lead a lot of times with what we think we're supposed to sound like. This is prevalent with actors and it's also prevalent in the business sector as well. I've also expanded the true tell for business leaders as well. And I found that this is a common problem amongst people as human beings that we hmm. all try to put our best foot forward in how we sound. I'm gonna sound authoritative. I'm gonna sound like a father. I'm gonna sound like a friend. And when you do that, it's a disconnect from the story that you're telling. Because people, a lot of times, won't tell you that you sound inauthentic. They won't tell you sound, you know, like you're trying too hard. They'll just kind of in their soul kind of go, what is that? Or an agent, will, you won't book a job. Or an agent won't call you for an audition. You won't get a call back. You're getting you're getting direct feedback from people as to whether you're connected to a story or you're not. So the true tell was put in, was put in place to teach people to speak from what I call your 100% authentic opinion about every single thing you talk about and expecting that your voice is going to turn itself exactly where it needs to, to convey that message. Um, one of the things I, I've been really harping on the last several months is, we work in an audio-centric business. Three of us do. Everybody else does. But there's a misnomer that people have that it is about the sound, that that's what books the job. The truth is, it's the story you tell. It's the connection to what you're saying, and the voice follows behind it. There's that's the yeah, and there's no question about it. And that's what George and I work on all the time is it's not about the sound. We work with the sound to make you sound like you because the idea yeah. of a home voiceover studio is not to make you sound great it's to make you sound like you because you should already sound great because you're a good voice actor and this isn't even about the voice you physically hear in your head i right. just was scrolling on a page on facebook and somebody wrote the voice we hear in our head when we speak doesn't sound like the voice we record why no this is a different thing that's a physical thing right we're talking about the way you act in your head Exactly. And the other the part about the physical, I don't sound the way I think I sound in playback is because I, we hear our voices one one thousandth of a second faster through our skull and through our ear canals. So if you covered your ears, or if you were in cans, but if you cover your ears, you hear your, your voice in your skull a different way than you're hearing me and Dan's hearing me. We are hearing it one one thousandth of a second slower than I am. So we go to playback you're kind of like, that's not how I sound. Right. right. And I yeah. think we break it to you. <laughs> yeah. Plus, you're hearing your voice transmitted through, physically, through your jaw and your skull. Skull. Mm -hmm. it's, it's passing through your actual structure of your head. Totally. So it, you, you always sound different to yourself. Always. You do. You do. And it's really, and to give people the credit, 
it is having been an actor for 30 years and been coaching now for 12 it's it is it is really hard particularly during covid where you don't have the luxury if you live in la new york or chicago or even san francisco or seattle you you can't go to your agent's office you can't audition there or go to a casting office and what the big markets are learning from the smaller markets is what they've known all along they never get directed hardly ever they work from home and so everyone now is in the same boat where it's basically saying well it's sink or swim. It's you and you yourself and you. It's that it's the feeling of, and what I try to get across to everybody, guys, is the feeling of a true story that feels effortless when you speak it versus you tr struggling and trying to tell the story because you think it's what they want. Yeah. You know, you're kind of, you're in that ether where right now there's just bl a, bl a black hole. Like Dan, like you said, once it goes out, I don't know where the hell it's going. Right. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. And we've made some inquiries as to where does it go? And and usually it's not anywhere near we th where we think, uh, you know, who's yeah. who's actually listening to it and, and, and what do they think? The only time you know if you've gotten good feedback is if they say you've booked the job or if you've got a callback or something along those lines. Yeah. And then, I mean, you also have the times too. I say to, I say to talent too, you also want to check in with your, your reps if you have them. I know with, with pay to plays, that's impossible because you you either book the job or you don't. And that's one of the disadvantages of P2Ps, one of them. Um, but when it comes to agents or it comes to casting directors, if you have the opportunity and build relationships, which is absolutely the key to this business, um, you you have the opportunity to say, and, I, and I've said this to my agents before, how many of my auditions actually are going out? Because I think actors might also have the, the, mis, the misunderstanding that just because you audition it doesn't mean they're sending it out. Right. Because they may audition 50 to 60 voices and the client says, send me 10, send me your top five, send me your top 15. So you want to check in with your, your reps to say, how many of these are actually going out? Where am I nailing it? And I, that doesn't mean I'm telling everyone to bombard your agents tomorrow with emails and saying, I want to check in. But it's every once in a while, once a year, maybe once every half a year, check in and see if you're, if you're getting there. But the key, again, goes back to not relying on the agents to tell you. It's really that feeling of truth, that feeling of connection. Yeah. That's going to be the key. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, if you're just tuning in right now or clicking in or whatever it is you guys all do out there on the Internet, we're talking with Dave Walsh of uh, Dave Walsh Voice Coaching and uh, VoiceOver Coaching. Uh, an excellent coach. If you've got a question for him, and I'm sure this is going to raise all sorts of questions in your mind about how can I improve what I do, throw it in the chat room. I know Jeff Holman's out there sitting there going, Please ask some questions so I can Please type them. Easy. Yeah, it, yeah. So it, it it makes it easier for us a little bit later on. So let's talk about TrueTel just a little bit. Give people a little overview of what it is you teach and how it makes a difference in their delivery. Well, I think the first thing is getting people to understand, like I said earlier, that story is king. Story is the absolute most important part of this work. And what the TrueTel, what I try to do is, and again. This isn't that this method is better than anybody else's. It's just what I know. It's what my experience of having lost my voice and regaining it has really kind of given me a whole other perspective on the work. Um, it's really about how you relate to the stories that you're telling. Because when we talk, when you guys all have conversations, we all talk to each other authentically because we're creating the stories and the conversations in our heads. We're what I call the executive producers of those conversations every minute of the day. So every visual that's flying across your brain is formed authentically. And the sound of those conversations sound truthful. They sound connected and present. But what happens is when we get into the booth and we get a piece of copy and we say, okay, they want me to be warm, authoritative, average, everyday guy, gal, guy you're having a beer with. And you sit in the booth and people will say, okay, warm, authoritative, everyday guy. Right. And you repeat that over and over in your head. What you're trying to do is fit a square peg in a round hole. You're trying to make it sound like what the, what the spec on the page is talking about. In truth, 
that's what it's going to sound like when you tell the story truthfully, when you connect to it. What we do in the work is get you to that baseline of the foundation of why am I Dave Walsh, George Whittem, Dan Leonard? Why the hell am I telling the story in the first place? The purpose is really, really important. Absolutely. We're talking yeah. with Dave Walsh. And uh, again, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room. Uh, so why, why don't we look at some copy here so people can get an idea of what we're talking about? Okay. Well, one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, just before that, but this, sure. this is going to be right into the script, is how the reads have changed. One of the things you brought up at the top of the show was how COVID has changed what I do with clients. I want to kind of focus a little bit for everybody out there of how the reads have changed for them. Because we live in a country right now that is so divisive, as we know. And I've said this, I feel for any ad executive right now, because we live in such a very diverse country that certain agencies, certain clients have products that are very COVID friendly and others that are not. So it's trying to figure out where these reads are. Um, at the very beginning of COVID, we had what was known as the COVID read, which was because we were so in the throes of the pandemic that every read was compassionate, Let's empathetic. Do it together. Let's do it together. Yeah. All in this together. <laughs> so that was, you know, the tragedy of it was so part of the read. And then as time went on, the read changed to one with a slight bit of hope. We wanted a little bit of that. We're coming out the other side a little bit. This was coming in April into May. We start to say we start a little bit of a of, of a of an uptick. The surge happened in April. We came down a bit in May, and so as we got from May to June, it became what I call the nothing to see here read. <laughs> Which okay, means, like fast food companies like everything from Wendy's to Carl's Jr. to Burger King or whatever, because we got the touchless delivery down with picking up the bags. Let's go back to just selling burgers. Let's go back to selling chicken. That's the one thing that's COVID proof. The read isn't going to be happy-go-lucky, but it's not going to be morose. It's not going to be sad. It's going to be if there's one thing we can control is our fast food. <laughs> so going to a supermarket is a different story. But if we drive through, we're fine. So we still had a little bit of a COVID read, and we had a been there, done that read. And then we had a read come August and July were companies like Southwest Airlines, Kia, Enterprise Rent-A-Car created what I call the permissive read, which was, you might not be ready to fly yet, but we're here when you're ready. You may not be able to ready to take that road trip, but we'll be here when you're ready. You know something? Go take that road trip. We won't tell. They, it basically was giving people permission who were saying, screw this, I'm going on a road trip. Screw this, I'm leaving town. And there were companies that didn't weren't telling people to be maskless, but it was saying to people, take a safe road trip, take a flight. Southwest was probably the only airline that was talking about their cleaning procedures, et cetera. I don't, the other airlines were doing that in print. They were doing it in news reports, but they weren't doing it on television. So those reads kind of evolved. We've come now to kind of a, a, a kind of meaning of the minds now where it's, it's basically a hammock of everything. We've swung back a bit to mask wearing. We've come on the other side of an election. And so the reads are kind of leveling themselves out. Um, older reads for more things that were more kind of gravitas and more of that kind of conviction, they've given way slightly to more the millennials actually can get employed again. <laughs> the millennials were basically not working for the last seven months as much. and the read has kind of become out of that kind of heavier, heavier read and kind of found a middle ground. So I wanted to just kind of bring that up to talk about kind of the state of VO, particularly with commercial. Um, promo has found itself, has found its sea leg back to where it normally is. There is more heartfelt stuff, but television has become such an escape for people that promo is responding with escapism taking us into these individual worlds of news and children's and drama. Look at Hallmark Channel. Hallmark Channel started its Christmas season even earlier this year. So um, that's just kind of where I see where all this has happened. And documentaries really have exploded because it was a very 
safe way to produce when we weren't allowing people to be back in any form of a studio. Right. So that's where we are. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, sorry for kind of monopolizing here. I that, wanted to. That's your job. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, I wanted to move to one of the scripts I sent you guys. Mm -hmm. um, this script is a COVID script, but it, and it still applies to a lot of the country and a lot of to Las Vegas. This was what is called a love letter to Las Vegas. Um, and it came out a few months ago. Um, and I want to kind of work with this. And I picked this particularly for you, Dan, um, that I thought that your voice would be perfect for this read. So we're going to use you as a guinea pig. Okay. Okay. Now, have you had any chance to look at the script at all? Uh, no, we were very busy, but I'm looking at it now. Such an excuse. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was too busy to look. I, I, so take a look at the script quickly. Yes. Take, take your, well, take okay. your time. Right. You know. Okay. It's all right. All right. And I'll, I'll, I'll speak to you guys while Dan's doing that is it's really key in your prep to make sure you know what it is you're talking about. It's not as simple as saying, well, I'll just do it. There's going to be scripts where you're going to look at a script and you are going to connect to it immediately because it's in your wheelhouse. It's, it's something that you believe in. So that thing, George, you may have heard this too from people. I just, I just do it. I just jump in and do it. That's the case with a couple of people. And you could be a wunderkind that way, but most people aren't built like that. So the key is to look at the script and understand what it's about and understand your true tell. It's what I call your 100% authentic opinion. So, Mr. Leonard, what would you say this particular script is about? What are we dealing with here? Um, What's the subject matter? Well, the subject matter is how COVID is affecting everything and how it's... It hasn't stopped everything, but there's a way that we can get through this. And and what particular what particular city are we talking about in this? Oh, we're talking about Las Vegas. Okay, we're talking about Las Vegas. Okay, so would you say that you agree with your true tell about that story? Basically, saying we'll get through this, right? Right. Okay. So your true tale about that story, your 100% authentic opinion is what? Are you connected? Do you agree with it? Oh, absolutely. No, okay. Because it's a very positive message and it's like, you know, come on over to Las Vegas. <laughs> okay. So the key, the key to this, everybody, is listen to the way Dan said, oh, absolutely. First of all, he gave us a thumbs up. Secondly, he was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. So there was nothing in his true tell that was kind of a barrier into him telling that story because he believes it, right? Right. Now, the second part of this is understanding who you're having the conversation with. Right. And that's anybody that wants to get out of where they are. <laughs> right. So it's, it's really a script that not only is about Vegas, it's about every part of this country. It's every part of this world, right? Right. So is there someone in your world, Dan who is negative about this, doesn't have as much hope about it, doesn't, and I've talked to several people about this, um, that really doesn't have that bright of a, of a view of what's happening. That yeah. needs at least that kind of a, that kind of an, an, an assurance. Yeah, I can think of a couple of people like that. Okay, first name only. Uh, Marcy. <laughs> okay. So Marcy... Mm. Marcy doesn't really have, she, she's, she's not as positive as you are. No. Okay. So if you're going to have this conversation with her, we want to talk about what got us to this. What's the first line of the script, by the way? This is only an intermission. Do, even guys, listen to the way he even delivered that. That was authentic. This is only an intermission. Right. Continue. It's not our final bow. Not by a long shot. Not while we still got each other. Because if there's one thing that a city brings us, people together knows, it's that we always find ways to come together, no matter how far apart we are. And yeah, we will beat this. We will. In our living rooms, our bedrooms, our kitchens, our backyards, our hearts. Most of all, our hearts. Because we have a secret weapon. 
each other. Okay. So the thing I've always said about Dan's read, everybody, is that Dan is the very, it's a very practical read. It's saying, this is the way we, sol this is the way we solve the problem. He, he is, the, he is the, sol he is one of the solution Kings of our industry. He and George is that it's all about creating the solution. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. Yeah. We'll figure right. it out. Right. No problem. Exactly. exactly. Now we do it. So what's built into what I call your vocal DNA, Dan, is it's, it's, it, it's solution. It's your, it's at the base of who you are. And that's not something that we want to easily change and manipulate. Because one of the reasons we gave you the script is because you've got the gravitas in your voice from years in radio. You've got that ability to find that, that level of reason, practicality, that can carry the weight of the story. Hope that makes sense to everyone is that Dan's voice, because you guys have watched him for so long and a lot of you guys know him personally, there's a weight in Dan's voice that we're talking about. We're not talking about the sound of his voice. We're talking about the credibility that he can bring to the read versus him trying too hard. So there's a couple of places, Dan, I'd say, you were trying a little hard. You were putting the sound before. You were using the solution sound to it. So if you're having this conversation with Marcy, what was the conversation, we call it the pre-life, what was the conversation you were having with her right before this that got us to that first line that this is just an intermission? Oh. Who are you talking to her about? Yeah, uh, this is never going to end. This sucks. You know, I don't see this getting any better. Everything has changed. That sort of thing. Okay. Where are you having the conversation with her? In our living room. Okay. It sounds like an odd question, but when we're having conversations, even this, this, this way we're all talking here online, where it's taking place and when, those elements are so important because they create and they influence how your voice is going to sound when you tell a story. You're telling a story on an airplane. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're telling it at home. You're telling it on the street. You're telling it on a, on a Zoom call those environments are going to dictate how your voice sounds. So if you're having the conversation with Marcy, um, feet up in the living room, just having a conversation and she's feeling down and you're, do you have a couch that you guys sit next to each other on? Well, sometimes. Sometimes it's, <laughs> sometimes it's across the room. <laughs> it's across the room. Okay. Let's say tonight you're actually feeling a little, you know, we want to be a little closer. Okay. In, so we're going to put you guys on the couch next to each other. And okay. it's just a conversation you're sharing with her. And she's frightened. Is she frightened? Oh, yes. Okay. So it's a very, very intimate conversation between you and Marcy. Now tell the story. Okay. This is only an intermission. It's not our final bow. Not by a long shot. Not while we still got each other. Because if there's one thing that a sit one thing a city that brings us people together knows it's that we always find ways to come together no, no matter how far apart and yeah we'll beat this we will in our living rooms our bedrooms our kitchens our backyards our hearts most of all our hearts because we have a secret weapon each other george what did you think of that read versus the one before it 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 felt way more real much more real yeah but i also felt like and dan i think we've talked about this before is that when i take dan's voice away from him when i take this when i take volume away notice how he sped up that the lines where you're doing what i call chase the period mm -hmm. where you're jumping the read is jumping too fast mm -hmm. because you're we're, we're, mm -hmm. think of it this way everything and this is for everybody you're thinking about the editor who's taking the visuals of what you're talking about and marrying your audio track to what they're creating. Think of all of these things as a TV spot instead of a radio spot. And so what he or she is going to cut together are all these visuals of what we're talking about in the script. Um, the line of, um, we'll beat this in our living rooms, our bedrooms, our kitchens, our backyards. They may be cutting between these things and they may not be. But you always want to err on the side of giving the editor enough the space. space. Yeah. Mm. 
but it doesn't mean to chop it up. It just means that in your mind, these visuals are changing this fast. But the bigger issue for you, Dan, is when we take the volume away from you, the intimacy of the conversation with Marcy, and it's a subconscious thing, you speed it up. So it's having that conversation just kind of with that one-on-one -on -one give between you and Marcy. There's no need to speed it up. So there's a comfort in this. Um, I love that you're sitting back in the chair. Did that chair have a back on it, Dan? Mm -hmm. Okay. You sitting all the way back? Okay. Now I am. Okay. I love that. Okay. Not not flop like a platypus. Well, um, that's how it's like on our couch anyway. I don't think of sucks. anything else to think of. I'm like, oh, I'll say platypus. Okay. Uh, so I want you just to relax. Sit back in the chair. Okay. Nice and relaxed. Okay. And... It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Marcy, and I want you to choose between two fabrics. Those of you that are watching that have done this before, go on. Here he comes with the fabric. I want you to choose between two fabrics, silk and satin. Which would you choose? Probably silk. Okay. What color? Um, silver. Silver. Lovely. I don't get a lot of people choosing silver. So I want you to take a beautiful piece of silver silk, and I want you to drape it literally drape it over the words now it's just draping over them it's not it's just going to flow down over it mm -hmm. now tell the story of mercy okay. <clears throat> this is only an intermission it's not our final bow not by a long shot not while we still got each other because if there's one thing a city that brings us people together knows it's that we always find ways to come together, no matter how far apart. And yeah, we will beat this. We will. In our living rooms, our bedrooms, our kitchens, our backyards, our hearts. Most of all, our hearts. Because we have a secret weapon. Each other. Okay, good. Very nice. Very, very nice. Much more much more relaxed in the read. And what I, what I get from that is... It's what I call the front porch read. There's an element to that read where it's almost like you're in the rocking chair in the front of the house. doesn't mean it's an older read. It just means it's more familial. It's more of, would this be right for Vegas? Probably not. Because what they want from Vegas is probably what the visuals we're going to see. It's a little bit different. But I think for Americana, for the Midwest, for St. Louis, for Kansas City, for Albuquerque, for Phoenix, it doesn't matter where we go. There's an element of familiarity to it, that comfort in that voice. Instead of it being the voice that's up here, we've, we can, you can play that till the cows come home. But when we pull the volume back and get to the truth of the story and use that layering technique of the, of the silk or satin, the reason we use that, everybody, is that there's a visceral reaction I found in the soul to fabric. There's a way that we connect to different types of fabric cotton, wool, silk, satin, you know, whatever, flannel. It affects how we feel inside. So the more that you use things like that as a layering technique, the more it helps the read smooth out. Absolutely. Again, the core of this is getting to that place of truth. Right. Exactly. How did it feel for you? How did it feel for you, Dan? It sounded, felt like something I might actually say. So. Yeah. 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 Because it got us in that intimate place of, understanding the where and when where you said you and Marcy might be on other sides of the room for tonight, just for tonight, we kind of put you on the couch next to each other because she was really feeling afraid. Yeah. Yep. And so when we get to that truthful place that the client isn't going to know on the other end, everybody, they're not going to know what Dan did. They're just going to know they like it. Very good. What's Remember this. That's exactly what the client's looking for from you. Right. Once again, we're talking with Dave Walsh. If you got any questions, throw them in the chat room. But right now, while we're in this really intimate mood, it's time to take a break. And we'll be right back after these important messages. Don't go away. Hello. Hello. And Welcome there are four to questions. Voices 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 Shop. Shop. Ah, it's a place okay. where you can get your body shopped with voices. Come on. Look at Dan's head. So shiny. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, 
We want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. You are the first to know about a new Mac app from VO Heroes called Audio Cupcake. Audio Cupcake creates beautiful audiobook and podcast audio files that meet the technical standards of ACX, Audible, Findaway, and all podcast platforms. The free version of Audio Cupcake does just what Levelator does. RMS normalization and compression ready to be post-processed in your sound software. Unlock the premium version and Audio Cupcake finishes the job by peak normalizing your WAV files to minus 3 dB and outputting them as 192K MP3s ready to upload immediately. No more post-mastering, you're mastering. It's a huge time saver. Download Audio Cupcake for free at audiocupcake.com. That's audiocupcake.com. Oh, hi. You know, if you live in a house and your voiceover studio is in that house, you don't want to disturb everybody else who's living in there. So what you need are good headphones that are made specifically for voiceover. And that's why we have Harlan Hogan's Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0. What's so great about these? Well, one, they have a very flat response, so you only hear exactly what it is you sound like. Second incredibly comfortable leather leather pads on the outside filled with memory foam a really comfortable headband that really it really works with your head the most important thing you can wear them for long periods of time that's really important where do you get them only at voiceoveressentials.com that's voiceoveressentials.com just go there look at the headphones and get them now tell them we sent you thanks harlan yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. And we are back with Dave Walsh uh, here on Voice Over Body Shop talking about True Tell Method and how to sound real with your uh, with your reads. Uh, let's get to a couple of questions here because our vast audience out there is totally intrigued by what you're talking about. And uh, so let's get in there. George, you got the first question here from Mr. North. Sure do. Uh, Fred North asks or says, uh, my business is primarily retainer based with radio and TV stations where I am commercial voice um, or a converse commercial voice. Um, I read a ton of bad scripts every day. It's tough to make locally owned and operated and conveniently located sound real. Any help is welcome. I know you're a highly trained staff of my friend. I know you're a highly trained staff of my friendly, helpful neighbors can help so um yeah so how do you take that stale that stale script you've seen 800 times that local read read. life into it yeah oh yeah no it's it, it's a con it's a common question and i think you know every story every story needs to be told the, the the truth of this fred thank you for your question by the way um the truth is the script itself doesn't know that it sucks <laughs> it doesn't know that the writing is bad. It doesn't know. All it knows is it needs to be told. So regardless of how much you hate the script, the words aren't going to move around. They're not going to, they're not going to change out the words because you don't like it. So to your point, what do I do with those common words that just feel like we've said them 5 million times? Again, it's getting to the point where you understand that, understanding your true tell about the story. Um, is key. First of all, you know what the story is about. Let's take local auto, auto dealerships, right? Local small businesses, which please, please frequent your small businesses right now, everybody. Um, that those reads, the, the writing may not be as up to snuff as you think it should be, but 
that story needs to be told. And one of the things people have had some trepidation about, particularly with auto dealerships, which are much bigger in reads, we call them dollar a holler sometimes, that the reads are big. And what I say to people is you want to stay within the event aspect of the read. In other words, those, those stories are about events and they want you to, to get them out, they rip and read. But if you connect to the story, it's not going to change the sound of the read. It's going to change the connection of the read. The client isn't going to fire you. The client's not going to say, that's not what I bought. But you're on retainer with them. Take a chance. Connect to the story and understand the dealership you're talking about. If you're not a car guy or gal, you're not telling that story. Get out of the automotive business, not as the talent, but as the person that's telling the story. What do I mean by that? Bottom line is we're actors. This is what we do, is that that's the basis of all character development that any on-camera or stage actor uses. They don't use themselves. Every character we create for stage and screen is an amalgam of other people we know. That's why actors are sponges. Use that in voiceover. Is there somebody else you know in the world that can tell that story? Because they're an audio, they're an autophile, they're an auto junkie, they love a sale, they love a deal. Let them tell the story. Because what that does, Fred, is it takes you, it takes the, the weight off of you. You don't need to try to roll that stone up a mountain anymore. Roll it back down and let your characters tell the story. And these characters are people in your life, people that you know, people that can, t- can tell that. Don't ever throw the baby out with the bathwater and be like, well, I'm not connected to this. It, 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 I, it's, a terrible re- it's a terrible writing and I hate the client. I'm not going to bother auditioning. No, I, would, I wouldn't be worth my weight as a coach if I told you to do that. There's always a way through. So if it's either not you telling the story, who else in your world can tell it? Good point. There you go. All right. Uh, next question is from... Jason Leach for Dave, since, hey, Jason. You're, the, yeah, since you're the guest here. Uh, as you are obviously up on the commercial VO market as a whole, where do you go to the most, where do you go to the most to do the, that research? I spot YouTube, et cetera. Where do you, you know, if you've got, you know, you want to find out about what it is you're reading about. Right. This is a great question. Thank you for it, Jason. Um, it's all of those. It's everything. The, the one thing of, that I've always loved is I came from the world of research before I was an actor. I was a, a research a director for Paramount Television. So I've always been a research geek. And I've loved always diving into knowing the why of things and what, how things connect, to, connect together. So I've never been anything but researching commercials that I've auditioned for, jobs I've done, promos for networks and shows I've done trailers and documentaries, all of those things. And this speaks to a bigger issue, Jason, other than just commercial. It's the entire industry. It's every single client you have, every script is it, the honor. It, it, you, you owe it to the client. You owe it to the writer to do your research, to do your homework, because they took the time to write it. The amount of time it takes these clients to write the scripts, get them approved by marketing and by legal and by the clients themselves, that work is so much, it's so tedious for them. We get the script, sometimes we say, no, I'll just read it. That's a disrespect to the script and it's a disrespect to the client. So the research, particularly for commercial, is things like iSpot, is things like the five second commercials that are on YouTube. And I, I will say, it is television watching guys, it is radio listening, it is listening and watching what is what's happening? I did a um, an interview with uh, Robin Armstrong and Tina Marasco as part of that voiceover last weekend. I hosted it, and be- before I jumped into that session with them, I spent three hours going through network after network after network and local affiliate, going through commercials and listening to because that session was all about commercials. And I wanted to do a quick tap in to if anything has changed in the last few weeks. Because if it has, it's bringing that up in the dialogue with people. And so know that the auditions that you're getting, Jason, are real time. These aren't auditions of things that were written three months ago. These are things that were written in the last several weeks, if not the last several days. And it's current. So it's staying on top of 
the work as best as possible. That's, that's, that's what I do. All right. One from Vanessa James, Mr. Whitham. Oh, yes. Vanessa James. Uh, what are your tips on elevating your overall delivery to make the audition as palatable as possible to the casting agent? Uh, are there any no-nos to stay away from? Yeah. Stop telling lies. <laughs> yeah. Well, stop. Dude, stop. the question I have for you, Vanessa, by the way, thanks for the mess. The, the question is think about how it feels for you. I guess I would ask this if we were, were sitting face to face or zoom to zoom. Um, how often do you feel like the auditions you're sending in don't feel connected? You know, we, we have this, you know, this feeling of we, we as human beings, conversations with people where we're not really connected to them, we avoid them at all costs. You guys know this. I mean, it's like, you don't, there are people you don't want to spend time with. If you're obligated to, you know how that feels when you're like the, the tightness in your stomach where you're like, oh, they, I got to do this. But you know how it feels when you're speaking with somebody where it's effortless, where there is that connection back and forth, the give and take. It's so easy. And it's the same thing in the booth, Vanessa. Do you feel connected? Do you, how do you feel when you're reading the script? Do you think that you're connected to it? Because I guarantee you, if you are, the casting director will hear it, the producer will hear it, and the agent will hear it. If you're not connected, the same thing will happen. I say to clients all the time, Connection sounds connected. Disconnection sounds disconnected. It's what I call audio math. Yeah. We got time. <laughs> yeah. We got time for one more question here. And it sort of goes back to what we were talking about earlier when you're saying, are you in that chair? Uh, it says Eddie Young says, would sitting down when recording help more with the relaxed kind of read? Thanks, Eddie. Hope you're well. Um, hey, from Hong Kong. Um, it depends on what's comfortable for you. If you feel more relaxed standing, stand. If you feel more relaxed sitting, sit. I, that's, I started out my career stand, uh, like kind of half sitting. And then I found that it, it compressed my reads too much. So I stood and standing basically has become my thing. Every once in a while I might sit, but it depends on what makes the most sense for you um, as a performer. All right. Well, Dave, it's Always a super duper pleasure having you on here. Almost as much fun as actually working with you as a coach and as a psychologist. Uh, <laughs> I try. I try. I, I, I want to thank you guys again so much for um, this is my third time with you guys. And I've, I've always been really, really thankful for the support you guys have given me, the platform you've given me, and you give all of us. I mean, you guys, you know, there are a few of us in this business that really, really have taken the time to become, you know, icons become kind of the leaders of the message. You guys and, and a few other folks obviously are doing that. And I want to thank you guys for everything you do for us. It's wow. just, it's invaluable. Greatly appreciated, but we certainly appreciate you being with us. And uh, if they want to get a hold of you, where's, where's, where can they get a hold of Dave Walsh, the voiceover coach? They can get uh, in touch with me through my website, which is Walsh, W-A-L-S-H, voiceovercoaching.com. There it is right there. Uh, there it is right there. Uh, or you can email me at Dave at Walsh, voiceovercoaching.com. Uh, I'm also on Insta and on Twitter, um, as well as uh, LinkedIn. All right. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. We're everywhere. That's we right. That's right. Dave Walsh, everybody. Guys, thanks again. Everybody have a wonderful and very safe holiday. All Thank right. you. All right, Thanks, you, you too. All righty. Well, George and I will be right back to wrap things up and get ready for Tech Talk right after this. In a world of voices, one place wasn't VO Buzz Weekly. Voice over Body Shop, the better one. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. 
Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources, like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, everybody. It's that time of the show where we get to talk about our fantastic, wonderful, amazing sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. At this point, you have to know what Source Connect is. My gosh, all the agents are nagging you to get it. Um, Even if you don't have an agent, maybe consider having it ready to go so when you're asked for it, you can say yes. And what does that mean? You go to source-elements.com, get a 15-day free trial, but you can even wait to activate your trial. You can sign up, get your account going, get your iLock account set up, have all the pieces in place, and then wait to activate your 15-day free trial to make sure that it doesn't expire by the time you need it. But it gets better than that. If you have had your 15-day free trial and you let it expire, don't worry. There's now two-day passes. So you can activate your Source Connect for just that gig and just basically pay for the time you actually need. So you really can't go wrong. There's no major commitments anymore, no subscriptions. If you don't want to go that route, you do have that ability to just activate it and use it for a day or two. So it's a no-brainer. Be ready to use Source Connect for that big gig that comes down the line, which is happening more and more these days thanks to working remotely. And sign up at Source-Elements. And if you have a chance to tell them we sent you, would you do that? That'd be awesome. I'll be right back right after this. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voiceover Body Shop. I think we're back. Are we back? I know we're back. We lost George somehow. Well, let me roll through some of these while we try to find him back wherever it is he went. Uh, for, <laughs> I'm really here, I promise. Oh, there. Yeah, we can hear his voice. Uh, okay. Next week, we've got Tech Talk number 46, and uh, that's going to be an interesting one. We've got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. And uh, then we've got another great guest on the, 20, on the 14th of December. And then... I, I, I don't know. I can't see the monitor here anymore. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, but then after that, uh, the December 28th is a Monday. It's also my 64th birthday. So we're taking the night off. Uh, good so, on you. And it'll be the last show of, of 2020. Thank God. Uh, on the, uh, on the 14th. Okay. So anyway, our donors of the week, George, who are they? I will slip my plug in now because I don't want to forget. Okay. Do hey, for one it. chance. Okay. <laughs> Cause uh, and we only have four hours. Go. Uh, there's a Cyber Monday deal that I'm offering again this year, and you can find it at georgethetechsale.com. georgethetechsale.com. Go check it out. Obviously, it ends tonight. It is Cyber Monday. Go see what I have to offer. Go. go That's go. it. All right. Okay. Now, let's say, thank our donors. Uh, Philip Sapir. Trey speaks for you. Trey Mosley. Shelly Avellino, Natasha Marshuka, Marshivka, Marshivka, Marchevka, Natasha, Natasha, Marchevka. 
<laughs> Shalaka Kamaka. Uh, George Widom. That's my dad. Um, Rob Ryder. Or, Ra- and he Raider. pronounced it radar. Raider. It's because Raider. He's a radar. <laughs> Can we do this again? No, we're good. Uh, Diana Burns. <laughs> This is live. Diana Birdsell, Stephanie Sutherland, Antland Productions, Dwayne DeSalvo, Mike Gordon, Stephen Chandler, Martha Kahn, and Don Griffith are our donors of the week. And you've probably heard some of those names. And a couple of them are new because I mispronounced them. That's right. So uh, there you go. thank you from everybody for helping support the show in, in any way that you can. You can donate right on the page. You can do it as a one-time deal. Or subscribe on our little PayPal link at Linky Poo. And it could be a monthly thing if you like. And we appreciate it because we do. it's how we keep the show running every year. And we will keep on butchering. I will keep on butchering your names. <laughs> yes. You'll so notice. You'll notice. That's why I never do this. Okay. Uh, make sure you join our mailing list, by the way. You can also do that at our website, uh, VOBS.TV. And you'll get alerts as to what's going on this week. What's coming up. That's right. We also need to thank our amazing sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. All righty. And we also have to thank Jeff Holman for running a great job in the chat room tonight. And, of course, our technical director doing it all the way from Burbank. None of us are in the same place tonight. It's everywhere, everywhere. You know, uh, you know uh, Dave Walsh is in Vegas. You're in Santa Monica or Venice. 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 She's in Burbank. And I'm here in Sherman Oaks. And it's still a show. How do we do it? It's amazing. <laughs> Tell me about it. Anyway, but our uh, thanks to Sue Merlino for getting that done. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Uh, well, that's going to do it for this particular segment of Voice Over Body Shop this week. We're setting up for Tech Talk next, so stay tuned if you got uh, technical questions. Uh, and uh, But we got to remind you, voiceover is not an easy business. When it comes to your sound, though, it's important to remember, if it sounds good, it is good. All right. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next time. <laughs>